Hey guys, it's Tiffany and welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be discussing the case of Molly Tibbetts. This is a very current case that has had a lot of circulation in the media. I've had quite a few requests to talk about Molly's case and this is a case that investigators are just not releasing a lot of information about. Literally, I was researching this case up until I sat down to film this video because information just slowly keeps leaking out about Molly's case and even as I'm sitting here filming, more information could be coming out. So I definitely recommend that you guys research constantly like if you want to keep up on the case because it is just coming out like wildfire and it's really hard to keep up on. But my main goal with this video was to condense the information down into one video about what is out there about Molly's disappearance so far. So like I said, this is about the disappearance of Molly Tibbetts and she is the type of girl that loves to lift others up and she is a very kind and gentle person and she's also very charismatic. Molly was from a small, small town in Iowa called Brooklyn and this was a town of about 14 to 1500 people. That's it, like that is tiny. That is literally the type of town that everyone knows everyone in. And it's also the type of town where everyone was so comfortable that they didn't lock their front doors. They didn't feel the need to. Molly was a sophomore at the University of Iowa and she was studying psychology. At the time of her disappearance, Molly was staying at her boyfriend's house in Brooklyn that he was out of town about 100 miles away on a construction job. So Molly was staying at his house so that she could take care of his dogs for him while he was gone. Around 7.30, on July 18th, Molly decided to go for a run and this was the last time Molly was seen or heard from. The following morning, her boyfriend, Dalton Jack, texted her good morning and Molly never answered. This was very unusual, but no concern was raised quite yet. Molly was reported missing on the 19th when she didn't show up for work as a camp counselor. Like I said, Molly was staying at her boyfriend's home. The investigators went over after she was reported missing to see if they could find any clues within her boyfriend's home. There were no signs of any type of struggle within the home. So there was just very recently, I think this information came out yesterday, a man named Devin Riley had his home searched because he called in and told the police that he might have been the last one to see Molly alive. He was, as you can imagine, hesitant to come forward because he was possibly the last one to see her and he didn't know what kind of attention that was going to bring on to himself. But once he saw Molly's family pleading for some anyone that had any type of information to come forward that he knew he needed to come forward. He told police that on the day that Molly went missing, he saw her jog past his house and this was around 8 p.m. that day. So he said that he regularly saw Molly jog past his house about three or four times a week and initially he didn't really think much of seeing Molly's disappearance on the news until he realized that he hadn't seen the woman jogging past his house in a couple weeks. He said that she was wearing a neon pink sports bra with black khaki yoga pants. I'm not 100% sure what he meant by that, but he did say black khaki yoga pants. I don't know if he meant like black and a khaki color or if he was trying to describe the material. And she also had an a running band on her arm that he was assuming was holding her cell phone and her hair was pulled back into a ponytail. He said that when the police came over they asked him if he they could walk through and search his home. He panicked because he didn't know what to expect out of this. Um, I mean anytime the police want to walk through your home because someone has disappeared I'm sure that that's a little nerve-wracking even if you don't have anything to hide. He also had daughters so that makes it kind of scary for them. But he decided to put his daughters in the bathroom while the police walked through his home. The police walked through his home. They took about 10 or 15 minutes and then they were done. He said the police were very kind and polite. So throughout most of this investigation, the investigators have been focusing on a pig farm that is in Deep River, Iowa, which is about 20 minutes away from where 
Molly disappeared. They haven't released why they are focusing on this area, if they have some type of tip or information that has led them to this area, but they have done a lot of searches in this area. There was a man named Wayne Cheney, I believe that's how you say his last name, and he is the one that owned these pig farms, and he has been questioned at least five times about Molly's disappearance. Initially, he was taken down to the fire station and he was questioned for two hours and they held his cell phone overnight and they checked through it. But he does have past convictions of stalking and harassment. The FBI asked Wayne if they could give him a polygraph test and he initially declined to take the test. But just this past Tuesday, he admitted that he did take the polygraph test that day and he doesn't know the results of the test but he did eventually take one. Now if you don't know anything about pigs and pig farms I'm sure a big reason if they've had some type of tip leading to this guy the reason that they have been searching so thoroughly into this area is because pigs eat anything. It has been seen before people serial killers People that own pig farms that just murder people will literally throw body parts in to feed the pigs because the pigs will eat them and then it leaves no evidence behind. So I'm sure that this is very concerning if they've had some type of tip leading to Wayne or just leading to this area. So there was a neighbor that came forward and said the night that Molly had disappeared, they saw a black SUV circling in the area between the times of 11.30 p.m. and 1 o'clock a.m. Also, there was a man in Brooklyn, Iowa that was taking pictures of female joggers on July 27th. But this man, the police were initially looking for this man. Um, I mean, there's no crime against taking pictures of people. It's a little sketchy and the police wanted to investigate him so they were searching for him and he did eventually come forward. So Molly's boyfriend, Dalton Jack, who is not a suspect in Molly's disappearance, said that Molly had no enemies and she had no reason and she just wasn't the type that would just run away. He was quoted as saying, I've never heard her say a bad word about anybody and I've never heard anybody say a bad word about her. Now Molly's father, Robert, believes that Molly left with someone that she knows. He thinks someone went to the house that night. Maybe Molly had been talking to them and said, hey, come over, let's hang out, or he's not exactly sure, but it was someone that she knew and was familiar with, and she left the house with them willingly, not knowing that this person was gonna take her and hold her captive. Now, his words were, it's totally speculation, but I do believe that Molly is with someone she knows, probably someone who cares about her. But that relationship was misguided, misinterpreted, and went wrong. I think they're in a place with Molly and they don't know how to get out of this horrible situation. He thinks that they're in way over their heads. They didn't think that the situation was going to escalate and make national news like it has. At this point, they don't know what to do, but he is urging them to let his daughter go and just turn her in. On August 5th, during a search for Molly, investigators ended up finding a body. This was in Lee County, which was about 100 miles away from Brooklyn. This body did not end up belonging to Molly, but this means that there's another family out there that is mourning the loss of their daughter. Robert Lowry, who is from Nickmick, said that the reason that Molly's case has been so popular in the media is because of how rare it is. Someone just disappearing, almost vanishing into thin air the way that she has for no investigative reasoning. But this type of case also makes it one of the toughest types of cases for investigators because they have just nothing to go off of. Investigators have said they have solid timelines for Molly's case, but they aren't releasing any suspects or any specific details because they need to keep that close to the investigation. Now one thing I do want to say about the evidence, there were some rumors circulating that there was a red 
t-shirt found during one of the searches for Molly. And this red t-shirt resembled a shirt that she wore at a daycare center that she worked at. Now, I don't know how true these rumors are. I don't know if that, cert, if that shirt was actually found. It could have been a completely different red shirt, but people are just trying to connect the dots. Of course, the investigators aren't saying anything, so we don't know for sure if that could have been Molly's shirt or not. But according to Devin, the guy that says he was probably the last one to see Molly, she was wearing, she was running in a pink sports bra. So if that's true, then the shirt is irrelevant to the search for Molly unless she disappeared later on and was wearing that shirt. There is a Snapchat video of Molly from the day before she disappeared that has been making its rounds on social media as well. And this video just shows Molly being a normal 20 year old girl. She was dancing around, she was acting goofy, and in one part she was wearing a tie-dye shirt, she was sitting on the ground at the art gallery in Grinnell College. And like I said, she just was acting like your average 20 year old girl just goofing off having fun with her friends. Something else that was seen on this footage was Molly's iPhone and her Fitbit and neither one of them have been found yet by the investigators and they believe if they could find these items that could really help them in finding Molly. They believe if something would have happened to Molly on that run that the neighbors would have heard something, that Molly would have yelled if a stranger tried to grab her and bring her into a car, um, or, you know, someone would have at least looked out their window trying to see what was going on. But nothing was reported of that nature. And they believe if she was taken from the home unwillingly, that she would have fought back. They said that there's no way that she would have gone down without a fight. There would have been signs of struggle within the house because there was, Molly wouldn't have gone easily. But because there's just no information and no evidence, it's impossible to know if Molly made it back home after that run. Because they still haven't found her running band that she was running with that day, that could mean that she was abducted on the run. I mean, it would just make the most sense unless she had it with her when if she left that house willingly. Now, the family believes Molly did make it back home that day after the run, and this was because apparently um, I don't know if they searched her computer or what, but she had been doing homework late into the evening on the 18th. They have st stated that. I'm assuming that they have some way of knowing that she was doing this, but I don't know. Um, something else is that on the 18th, around 10.15 p.m., so obviously this was after Molly had gotten back, her boyfriend opened up a Snapchat of Molly. Now, it's not known what time this Snapchat was actually sent, but it is believed that it was sent not too long before he opened it, around 10.15. And this would obviously mean that Molly had made it back home after the run. But of course, <clears throat> the Snapchat could have just been sent earlier in the day, maybe before her run, even earlier than that, and he just didn't open it until 10.15. There's been over 200 interviews conducted in Molly's case and she still hasn't been found. Obviously, the investigators are not only being super cautious about the information that they release to the public because it could hinder the investigation, but also because if Molly is in a situation where she is being held captive by her abductor, that person could harm Molly if too much information came out and they are trying to keep Molly safe. They have canceled two news conferences that they had scheduled for this week. To me, that kind of makes me, me think that maybe they know something. They have something going on. Um, there's something, investigation is kind of picking up a little bit and maybe a tip came in or something that they're trying to follow through on and they are canceling these news conferences because they don't want to talk about that right now. But there is another news conference scheduled for Monday, so I'm interested to see how that goes and what all they say at that news conference. So just today, I was sitting down to research before I even started to film this video. An ex-FBI profiler came forward. If you don't know what an FBI profiler is, um, if you've ever watched the show Criminal Minds, I absolutely love that show. It is basically someone who sits down and looks at a situation, looks at 
a case and determines from all these different aspects of a case what type of person we'd be looking at here and what all this investigation might involve and what all the situation might involve. It's pretty much what it sounds like and they profile a situation. Well, this FBI profiler said that after reviewing reports, she believes that Molly left willingly with someone. My my perspective on that is is this that in the absence of uh, a struggle, which is uh, reported in the paper, that um, if she was at home at the time that she went missing, it's likely that she either went with someone she knew or someone that did not did not seem to pose a threat to her. So someone that seemed to be. Um, average that didn't that maybe came and asked for help so he thinks it is most likely that molly got into the car with someone she knew because it is such a small town she believes that if there would have been a stranger around in the town that day uh walking through the neighborhoods waiting to grab a jogger while they were running whatever the case may be someone would have noticed that person in a town of 1500 when a stranger walks in and just is walking through a neighborhood, they stick out like a sore thumb because in a town of 1500, you basically know everyone. And if there's a stranger, I mean, someone, someone would have noticed that they didn't know that person. They would have came forward and probably told the FBI by now, but no one has. So this FBI profiler is basically on the same page as Molly's dad. She believes Molly left willingly with someone not knowing what was going to happen to her. She believes that this was someone that Molly knew and trusted and is now being held against her will. This to me sounds like someone that possibly had an obsession with Molly. Someone that friends with Molly but secretly had this like dark obsession with her and acted on that obsession and now has Molly somewhere. But at the same time, I feel like, again, in a town this small, if someone's friend was acting out of the normal, maybe they hadn't seen this friend in a couple days or, you know, it's been a few weeks now. So I feel like someone would have came forward like, hey, so-and-so, I haven't seen him in a few weeks. I feel like someone would have said that by now, but I don't know. Molly is described as being five foot, three inches tall, weighing about 120 pounds. She had long brown hair and she had brown eyes. The reward for any information on Molly's disappearance is currently $312,000. I will put some information down below to numbers to call. Like I say in a lot of my videos, if you know something, please say something. Molly's life could be on the line in this video. Even if you think you might know something, like like I said, if maybe one of your friends, you haven't seen them in a couple days or a couple weeks and you've been wondering where that person has been, maybe they've said they were sick, something like that, call it in because you just never know. Molly could be out there alive. She needs our help. So I think that is it. For Molly's case, like I said, please, if you know anything, please just come forward and let the police know. Any little tip, any little thing could help find Molly. It could help bring Molly home safely. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. As always, please, especially in this case because it is, because it is so current it is very ongoing make sure your comments are respectful towards the case towards each other and towards me definitely don't want to be spreading any negativity around with these cases i mean these are real people we talk about in these cases and especially in this case that is so current but i think that that is it you can also give this video a thumbs up i would greatly appreciate it that really helps these videos get noticed. I know some of you guys in the other countries probably don't know about Molly's case. Here in the US, it's been pretty big, but in the other countries, you guys probably haven't heard about Molly. So giving this video a thumbs up will really help spread the awareness around on this case. You can also hit that subscribe button down below if you like these types of videos. But I think that that is it. Thank you guys so much for spending time out of your day 
to listen to Molly's case. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope it put all the information into one video for you guys. Like I said, there's consistently new information coming out, so still do some Google searches and some research on Molly's case if you're trying to keep up on everything that's going on. But I will see you guys in my next video, and until then, stay safe.